Hi, my name is Sergei Golubitsky and uh, I'd like to thank you for buying the second video. Uh, this video uh, you're about to see, it's the final of uh, World Cup uh, of Vienna 94, 1994. Uh, the first bout I fenced against Philippe Omnes, uh, the Frenchman, Olympic champion of 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona. The second bout is against Dmitry Shevchenko from Russia. Uh, bronze medalist at uh, Olympic Games in Sydney 2000, a world champion of 95. And the final bout against uh, Thomas Andres, the German fencer, which uh, got silver medal uh, at team event in uh, Olympic Games in Seoul 88. So as you, you, you can see, the fencers I fence are pretty strong ones. And uh, at the time they were w one of the best uh, around. Uh, why do I propose this final to be filmed, to be made uh, and hopefully watched by you? Because uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, the fencing within this past 10 years progressed, but somehow I feel that it became less interesting and uh, actually many trainers uh, saying the same thing. But the first bout against Filippo Mnes, it's, in my opinion, it's uh, quite a masterpiece because uh, we fenced all nine minutes and it was an uh, uh, extra minute for the last decisive touch, which I made. And it was, I would say, one of the best uh, bouts I ever made. The next one was uh, against Dmitry Shevchenko, which used to be my teammate at the Soviet Union team. And we fenced pretty many times and uh, he beat me pretty uh, often pretty many times and I beat him as well quite much and this bout actually I destroyed him I ate him alive and uh, I was happy with that and the first for the first place I fenced against my uh, German friend Thomas Andres uh, and uh, that season he was I guess as I re recall he was number one or maybe number two in German team so he was pretty pretty strong at that time so in the end I would like to uh, wish all of you all the best with your fencing, with, with, uh, with the sport you do. So I hope you're going to enjoy this uh, tape, watching this tape. And uh, don't go changing. Bye. So since 92 uh, Olympic Games, uh, when I lost uh, in the final to Philippe, uh, every bout of fence was really principal to both of us. As you can see, we are trying to investigate each other. We're trying to find out the weak spot, let's say, of each other, and uh, actually. Nowadays, uh, you can see that within three minutes, guys are making 20, 30 touches and finishing bout. Uh, to me, it's a little bit strange. I think first you have to understand intentions of your opponent, try to, to read his mind and then uh, make action needed. So as you, you can see, I first touch I made an attack uh, using a mistake of Philippe uh, because he was too close to me. And uh, now he was going forward too fast, so I made an attack on his preparation. So I made parry repost. So s uh, things going really good uh, in the beginning, so I'm leading 3 to 0. It seems that Philip can't find the clue what he has to do at the moment against me.
the moment Philip slowed down a little bit. But yeah, this one, yeah, I made an attack, but uh, referee. I took the black and gave her pose, but referee didn't give it in my favor. Now, as you can see, I made a mistake. My attack was too deep and I wasn't uh, able to go back as fast as I should and Philip gave parallel post. Look again after the lunch. I'm going forward, so I wasn't uh, fast enough. wasn't ready to go backwards. So Philip makes a compound pair of repost. As you can see, uh, each of us prefers and makes more touches fencing defensively. The referee made a mistake in this case because uh, Philip didn't touch me with his repost and I made let's say, a counter repost. Yeah, pity, but okay, it's fancy, everyone makes, making mistakes.
actually you can see it's getting more hot out there and uh, we are really warmed up and uh, I think producing really great fencing. But I also would like to point it at that, uh, yeah, look at the timing of, uh, of Philippe and mine. Uh, as you can see, uh, nine, ten years ago, the, th the speeds, speed was uh, much lower. But in my opinion, fencing was much, much interesting. You can uh, sort of see intentions of fencers. You can uh, sort of predict what one each of us would do uh, the next moment. So I'm watching this tape together with my former pupil and my friend Daniel Bowles and uh, you will hear his comments as well. I think it would, uh, would be fun. Yeah, I think it's really fun watching this tape with you again today because it's like so many times after training when we would watch the videos and then you're just giving comments on these tapes and now people that bought this tape can, you know, see what your comments on the tape are. Yeah. So, as you can see now, we uh, look <laughs> full of emotions uh, because no one wants to lose. <laughs> I think it's really great bout. Actually, referee after the bout, he told me twice, he said, great bout, great bout, so I think it is. Yeah, but would you say today it's like the fencing is more that people are running at each other as opposed to what you're seeing here? Yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, sometimes you can see, especially juniors, I'd say that uh, they're running like, I don't know, like crazy on, on the strip uh, and you sort of, sort of can't even understand what they want to do with their fencing, which action they want to uh, have to do. And uh, as you can see here, it's like uh, the speed is much lower, but uh, it's really like much more effective. At this moment, Philip thought he, he heard the signal of the effort and uh, he thought that uh, the time of the period is over, but uh, we have to fence one minute, so it was just a funny situation. For those uh, guys who bought the first tape, Golden Bouts, uh, you can see that my style is. Uh, my style differs from the style you saw at the last World Championship. And of course it's logical because uh, this tape is uh, from 1994. So I was, let's say, four or five years younger. And of course uh, uh, wasn't uh, complete as a fencer yet. But still uh, you can see a great ability, like uh, a good... Let's Good technique. Yeah, good technique, good b uh, basics, as well as Philips, because uh, yeah, what can I say? He's a world champion, an Olymp Olympic champion, so it's really this bout is uh, on a high level. Yeah, it seems when I watch this, it's just the main difference from what I see in a lot of the tournaments today is that there's a lot of, uh, like, the, the timing is very explosive. It's just, like, slow, and then it really, you guys explode when you decide to attack. Yeah, that's what I actually teach my students. The beginning has to be uh, always slower than the end of the action. So you have to accelerate in the very end and not at the beginning. Because if you're too fast in the beginning, it uh, gives a chance to your opponent to, to see your intentions and uh, 
like in a red, for example, or better reports because it's easy to read mm -hmm. to do. And mm -hmm. then you can see that Philippe and, and I we are sort of, you know, it begins really slow, so uh, we're coming forward really carefully to see, uh, ready to, to any reaction of opponents. Uh, and I think this is the really great and perfect fencing, I would say. Uh, actually, I, I know Philip. Uh, I knew Philip pretty well, and uh, I knew that uh, actually uh, he is uh, pretty often uh, short in attacks. So uh, therefore, I was uh, always alert and ready for uh, pair, uh, ready to make pair repost. And uh, actually, to catch him with uh, uh, while he fences fence defensively, it's uh, much more difficult. But still, I managed pretty many times. Uh, to find right distance in the right moment to, to score. And then uh, we will see in the end, anyway, we prefer to fence defensively, and I uh, got the victory. <laughs> Winning just by one touch. And uh, you can see uh, Philip equalizes the score, so it's my advantage, which uh, I had before in the beginning. Now it's just gone. As you can see, Philip made country reports. I made remiss and it was his touch, but was non valid of, ta of target. Gotcha. I mean, I could produce a good attack because you know, the situation is getting more tense out there, and uh, I was happy to make my ninth, ninth touch. You can see attack of Philip on my preparation really beautiful was to disengage the Really good attack and I wasn't ready. It was off balance. And again Philip punishes me with his parry request. Actually just uh, pay attention to, to the footwork we make. Really great balance, really great quality. I got upset a little bit with uh, team captain Serge Plosteri because he was all the time uh, saying to referee that my 
blade bent too much, so I got uh, upset a little bit and uh, frustrated, let's say. And, uh, I guess it was yeah, not too good for me because I lost a little bit of concentration. But anyway, next slide should be mine. As you can see now, my irritation working against me. And Philip uh, seems found his rhythm, making touch after touch. too fast and I feel it with lean and I tried to get the blade but I couldn't find it so very nice action for Philip. Now it's a crucial uh, moment in the bout. As you can see, I'm 11 to 15 down, and finally I could make this good attack, which was successful. And uh, somehow I could find my concentration back. So when you're in this situation, when you're down, it seems like um, you're able to pull it together and come back and get your concentration. Is there anything that you think about in particular during these times? Yeah, at the very moment, uh, just when I put my mask on, when the referee says, Ale, I'm just trying to uh, fence for one touch at the time. So, and as you can see, I succeeded with that. And now it's 13 touches each, and uh, time is about to run over. And uh, it's a really important moment, so it's uh, the one who makes the first touch wins. And now, as you can see, Philippe is rushing too much, and I made a pair of posts off target. And I couldn't believe that I could, <laughs> could I made this uh, touch non valid. The next action actually will be almost exactly the same, and I made again pair of posts off target. So the time of bout is over and uh, I got the priority, so Philip has to come, has to make an attack. So I was waiting for his attack and uh, trying to prepare a pair of reposts. Check it out. 
now it will be a very funny moment. Look, Philip is approaching me and uh, we barked at each other at the same time. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Now you, you can see that uh, Philip gonna make lunch and then after one lunch you see the next player will post. So I could understand his intentions and it, that was with him to pull it off. It was great about it. It's important to have a good coach, of course. Yeah. Coach which can give you a lot, a lot of feedback, give you, uh, make you strong technically, tactically. This is very important. And of course, it's dedication, a lot of hard work. It's a lot of sweat and bleeding. That's the way it is. And uh, you have to believe uh, in yourself. And uh, you have to make a lot of repetitions of. Uh, of some stupid action, but you have to make it because uh, that's the way to to, to become uh, stronger. Yeah. So you have to show up every day and do your homework. Yeah. So you have to do your routine, which you have to do, uh, whether you have fun or not. Usually you don't have to, uh, fun making this uh, stupid, let's say, stupid but necessary exercises. You have to do it, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to train every time. You have to give your best, your hundred percent. If you train and you give 50% of your qualities and abilities, you, 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 you won't go any further. So Chevchenko now, and you fenced him many times in your career and in trainings. What what did you have planned for him? Yeah, you know, uh, Dmitry is a really tall guy, and uh, of course my tactic against him was a little bit different than uh, against Philip. And uh, I, this bout I preferred in the beginning. I preferred to fence defensively because uh, uh, that way I could disturb. Uh, his timing and his rhythm. So sometimes I had to make uh, counter attacks, sometimes pair repost. And uh, in the beginning, um, I couldn't find the right rhythm, but anyway, a little bit later I could. So uh, as you can see, sometimes I was making a reds, and uh, this step of uh, first step of uh, Dmitry is uh, really big and uh, really fast, and uh, therefore he gives me signal when he wants to go to attack. And uh, I was using this uh, mistake against him. So would you say that you kind of have the same uh, strategy against all tall people, or is it just against him in particular? No, uh, it's I have different tactics, of course, because uh, some guys are fencing uh, better in, in uh, better offensively. So I prefer to put pressure on them and uh, attack myself. So, in uh, this case, with Mitra, I prefer to fence from defense.
I don't know, this, this attack from Shevchenko, it looks like he really has his arm out. It's not necessarily straight. Uh, how do you describe that? Yeah, as you can see, he makes a step forward and uh, he pulls his arm back uh, because he anticipates in parry. If I take parry, he would go around the blade, let's say, and then uh, finish his attack successfully. If I would uh, make a red, let's say, and he would still finish right in time. And depends on referee. Uh, Usually he would uh, anyway win the action. If I make a red, he would make his attack, so it would be a touch uh, for him. But anyway, I could find ways uh, to make uh, a red with one light, and uh, also Dmitry made uh, a lot of mistakes by uh, choosing wrong moment and wrong distance. So, as you can see now, he's in trouble. As you can see, I'm uh, talking to assistant because uh, Dmitry, after each very deep attack he makes, he covers with uh, his right arm and I have no space to give repost to. So I'm talking to referee, trying to pull, draw his attention about this matter. Do you find that works pretty well when you talk to the referees that they change the way they start presiding? or? Yeah, sometimes uh, referee just busy with uh, fe fe fencing itself. He's uh, looking for uh, action, but uh, he, it's very difficult to pay attention about uh, non-armed hand or whatever. So it's not that easy for them sometimes. Referee uh, gave attack, uh, my attack in preparation of Shevchenko, and uh, I agree with him. But uh, a little bit later, uh, when it would be the same action, let's say, even uh, Dmitry would make a worse uh, mistake, referee would anyway give uh, advantage to him. So. Now you can see that uh, Dmitry pulled his arm back and uh, my red arrives right in time, but referee gives anyway attack of Shevchenko. Look, red arrives, his arm goes back, forth, so he loses the movement, fencing movement, but anyway, he gets a touch. Anyway, as you can see, um, uh, I have an advantage on this paper repost. So I'm on the driver's seat right now, and uh, things are getting better and better for me.
Okay, so it looks like uh, you're up by quite a bit now. Do you have any particular strategies when you're ahead like that, or what is what what are your thoughts? Yeah, in such situations, I uh, prefer to put more, even more pressure on my opponent because uh, when he is out of rhythm, it's uh, very difficult to. I mean, you need to take extra time to take a break and think about your tactics and uh, change something. So that's why I'm trying to be ready to defense as fast as possible and just uh, give more troubles let's say to my opponent. It means you actually try it again to protect uh, the target with his right arm, but anyway, I found this spot. So how do you feel about being uh, a coach versus being an actor? Is it hard that you have to stand on the sidelines and just watch? Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, it's, it's not easy, I would say. Sometimes it's easier for me to go in fence instead of my fencer. Uh, of course, it's also very difficult to watch when your fencer loses, when your student loses, and you can't help him, sort of. But uh, also, I, I'm always trying to put myself in the place uh, of my student and uh, trying to give a tips, try to coach him or her the way uh, that athlete can understand what he has to do at this moment, at this time. So, in my opinion, it's like uh, fencing is really, it's, it's mental, it's everything about mentality, about winning mentality, it's about to find right status uh, of mind for yourself to be ready to excel to be ready to make good result so and uh, uh, I, I saw so many times when the same uh, the same person uh, with one state of state of mind loses to the same opponent and with the other state of mind just just beats him so that's uh, really mental actually I, I wrote this and pretty many things uh, in my book which uh, I hope will be uh, will come out pretty soon book has to come out in the uh, United States and it calls Fencing is my life. I think, uh, I hope uh, it will become a bestseller and, uh, because it's many interesting things are in it and uh, it's also, I just try to show my way in the fence and how I began, why I began, mistakes I made, uh, the prizes I won and lost and uh, a lot of, there in, the, in the book there are a lot of uh, tips, advices, uh, for fencers and some of them for coaches.
As you can see, I, I made a great flash and I touched right uh, in the middle of the chest, but uh, um, the apparatus uh, registered white lump because uh, the, the crocodile was uh, connected not to lame but uh, under west. In the beginning, I couldn't find right with him against Thomas, but uh, I've met him many, many times since the junior age, and uh, I knew him and his uh, fencing pretty well. So and, uh, now I could could find the right uh, timing and right with him to. to, to Yeah, I disagree with uh, the referee, I made coupe, coupe. Thomas tried to get Perry, to make Perry, but uh, he didn't succeed with that, and in my opinion it was my touch, but uh, referee had another opinion. So you said a lot of times about the footwork and that uh, fencers that rush in are off balance. It looks like maybe Andres is uh, rushing in a bit or his footwork is not keeping him in balance. Yeah, while he is uh, making preparation, while he's working forward, he's working a little bit too fast and uh, therefore he's out of balance and I could use it uh, really uh, really good. Uh, his mistake against him, against him and uh, I succeeded with many events. And uh, also, as well, uh, it was uh, being too fast. He, I could predict the moment of, uh, uh, of his lunch, when he would make his lunch, and then I uh, made also pretty some uh, parry posts.
Oh, that was a nice one. Yeah, that was a sweet one. I agree. As you could see, again, Thomas was too fast and he, he had to pay for that. Now I like this coming touch. Look at this. Thomas was stuck with his legs and he couldn't make any step backwards, so I was making uh, fins and then finished my attack successfully. That's the way to make power post. I was ready with my legs when Thomas was uh, rushing forward and uh, I could stretch him with my legs and give a good power post. So after the break, I lost a bit of concentration, but anyway, I'm still ahead and I'm going to use all my chances to get this victory. Do you think about anything in particular during the breaks? How do you spend your time? Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to figure out uh, which touches were successful and which were not successful, so I'm trying not to make the same mistake again. And that's sort of it.
now make an attack and we we'll miss and we'll get this victory against me. What are the things that set you apart from other fencers? Well, ability to analyze, ability to analyze my opponent in really short time, ability not to make uh, the same mistake twice. Like, actually, this is very important uh, for the fencer. They shouldn't make the same mistake twice. And uh, yeah, believe in yourself, I would say. Also, like confidence, being strong mentally, this, this is important. So I hope you, you like the video you watched, you like the uh, final in Vienna. Uh, but uh, now I would like to present you another final. And it's a little surprise, a little uh, extras for all of you, for each of you. It's a World Cup uh, final 2001 in Paris, uh, where I fence uh, against uh, Roman Christian, a uh, fencer from Germany. Uh, it's score. Six five six to four. Uh, uh, I got injured, and then uh, I could quit fighting. But actually, I didn't want to do that, and I decided to uh, uh, fence with my right arm. And uh, after I got the, the per permission to change the arm, uh, I s still could score four touches. So it shows, I think, that. Uh, you can be strong enough if you're smart enough.
Vale. Hi, my name is Sergei Golubitsky. <laughs> Somebody came in public. <laughs> the second bout is uh, one against Shevchenko. Dmitry Shevchenko. Yeah, so it's just... yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just this word, and I'm, while I'm saying them, I immediately realize it's wrong. It's not. I mean, my English is a suck. <laughs> Don't put it on the tape. <laughs> It was shot uh, during the final of uh, World Cup tournament in Paris 2001 and uh, I was fencing uh, against German 